Professor Wergelis here. I want to show you a little bit about what we just did. Now, you'll see using form data, they talk about using the form builder. If I come back over here, they really have a, a lot of nice documentation for forms. Okay, so if we go over to the built-in features and look at forms, what's nice about this is it tells you the two different ways to use forms. Okay, one is called reactive forms, one's called template-driven forms. We basically just use the template driven forms. Now you'll see reactive forms are good for robustness. They're more scalable, more reusable, more testable. Okay, so this is kind of the more up to date way to use a form. But they're also harder to implement. They take longer to implement. They're a steeper learning curve, in my opinion. You'll see for data driven forms, which is kind of the forms that we just built, you'll see it's a simple form. If you want to add a simple form to an app, such as this an email list sign-up form or a login form, okay, so they're easy to add to an app. That's why I chose it for that lecture, but they don't scale well as reactive forms. So if you have a very basic form requirement and logic, so if the logic's very simple, which ours was, that could be managed solely in the template, which ours could, then template-driven forms could be a good fit. Okay, so this is kind of the default way that they did it, and then they came out with this new reactive forms, which is just a better, more easily scalable way. Now, you'll see for reactive forms, you need to explicitly define them. Remember implicit and explicit in 3330? Implicit happens automatically. Explicit, you need to define yourself. So the data model, you'll see this is unstructured, and it's mutable. This is structured and immutable. Okay, immutable objects are important. If you remember in MongoDB, uh, well, I guess we'll go over MongoDB here soon. In MongoDB, all the objects are immutable. In Java, all the objects are immutable. That means if you change the object, the old one is destroyed and a new one is created. What's nice about that is it's very secure, it's very stable. Okay, Java is a very stable language. And remember, like I was saying in the lecture, Google really likes Java, the, the concept of Java. Google is really based around Java, especially their core. They have definitely have new languages and they're going around Java. They've got Go, they got all these things going on. But a lot of their core functionality is built on, on Java or similar to Java. And Java is immutable, it's also structured. So that's why they use the new reactive forms. You'll see this one's unstructured. If I go back to the code, we just put any here. We didn't really have to define any structure. We just put any form, any element, and we could grab it. Very simple, easy to set up, easy to use. But what's nice about this is it's asynchronous, whereas the reactive form is only synchronous. So this updates automatically. We can do two-way data binding. This one, not so much. You'll see this one I need to use functions to validate. This one I could use directives, okay, which is nice. Directives we can just put right there in the template. For the reactive form, if we want to validate the form, we need to do it in the TypeScript, in the back end, whereas this we can do it in the front end. Okay, I recommend you read this. This is such a good documentation. It talks about setting up in reactive forms. So instead, you actually use what's called form control versus what we did. And it has nice documents. Okay, how does a reactive form work? You'll see direct communication from the front end to the back end. Whereas here, you don't really know what's happening. You put ng model, we did a one way, this is a two way binding. So I'm doing two way binding with this input field. And you really can't get access to what's happening here. You can access this variable in the back end favorite color, but you don't really know what's happening between the two. Okay, you don't really know what's happening between the two. And it talks about data flows. Okay, you should read this. You'll see reactive data flows usually just go from the front end to the back end. You validate it, and then you send it up to the database. Okay, it goes view to model. But with this, okay, let's see with this, you'll see here's template driven. So I, I my input files, they go back to the model. You'll see ng model train, it changes, a, it, it fires an event, and then I can then update the front end. So here's my favorite color. If I, in the back end, if I say this favorite color is equal to blue, it'll automatically change the front end. 
So I kind of have this two-way data binding here with the template driven. Okay, so it all depends. Now I can update the form from the back end with the reactive forms. It's just a little bit different. I need to call the set value method. So you'll see if I want to go to the back end, I can grab it easily. If I want to change back to the front end, I'll call the set value method. Whereas here, I can just access the variable directly because I did two-way data binding on the ng model. Okay, if all these, if this lingo is not making sense, two-way data binding, ng model, you got to go back and read the documentation. Otherwise, you're going to be lost. Okay, come back up here and read the five uh, pages, and then also read some more information here. Main concepts, built-in features, best practices. This is great documentation here. Okay, and it should have everything that you need to know. Okay, that's it for this video. We're going to keep building on to this challenge. We're going to use routing, angular routings coming up. Stick with Professor Orgelis, and we'll see you next time.